an ABC comedy special. Dick Van Dyke and Connie Stevens fight the system on Harry's battles. Resident. 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 Occupant. 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 <laughs> Junk. Whoa. Someone must have got a piece of mail from the phone company. <sighs> Dear sir, we'd appreciate it if you would remit. Mary Carol! Oh, I'm sorry. What is it, precious? Honey, have you been paying the phone bill? They say we're two months overdue. Yes, I sent that payment in last month. You did? Come to think of it, that castle check never did come back. Well, see, it's a post office again, probably late with the mail. They keep raising the price of stamps. Can't they spend some of that money for a new borough or something? I hate it when you get the mail before I do. You make such a fuss about everything. Well... No. What's that? Uh, a thank you note. We got a thank you note from Blitzer and Wolf's department store? Oh. Harry, I don't want you to get crazy. But uh, they've overcharged us for that dress shirt I bought you last month. How much they charge? Fifty-two thousand dollars. <laughs> you gotta be kidding! That shirt was on sale. Fifty-two thousand dollars. Offered. Harry, it's just a little computer error again. Now look, they got the color and the size right. Two out of three isn't bad for a big department store these days. I don't care, Mary Kell. I'm not taking this lightly. Oh, I'm going to the mat on this one. I know, sweetheart. You go to the mat with everything. What was it last month? Let's see, it was the binoculars, and yeah. then it was your camera, and then it was your jogging shoes. Harry, you took on the entire nation of Japan. That's right, Mary Carol. Harry Fitzsimmons fights back. The guy down at the record plant who pre-scratches every record I buy. The guy down at the car wash who changes the station on my radio. And an insurance adjuster who claimed I set fire to my own car. In the rain. Listen, Harry, you are going to drive me to an early grave with all of your battles. Yeah, well, you can bet they're going to bury you in the wrong plot. <laughs> I'm going to give the credit department at Blitzer and Wolf a little piece of my mind. <laughs> ah, changed your mind, didn't you? No, the line's dead. The phone company cut off the service. <laughs> We don't get big musicals like this in Pittsburgh every day. <laughs> I cannot believe these tickets. Can you imagine that? A Vita with Kate Jackson? <laughs> I didn't know she could sing. Uh, she's full of surprises. <laughs> oh, Harry, one thing. When we leave that theater, now you know there's always a 20-minute wait when we leave the parking lot, so I want you to be patient, all right? And if you do what you did the last time, I'm getting out of the car and I'm calling a cab. What did I do last time? You got out of the car and you called a cab. Uh, well, don't worry. This time we're going to park for free at the Taco Burger lot. I hope they don't tow us away. Darn it, where's Herbie and Diane? They're going to make us late. Would you believe all they have to do is walk across the driveway? I'm going to yell over there. Hey, 
hi, hi. Who's that grin? Oh, I couldn't find my rape whistle. Yeah. And I had to turn on the security alarm and electrify all the bars on the windows. And then I had trouble getting the chemical mace on my keychain. Hey, but now we're all ready for a fun night on the town. Hey, Harry. Great shirt. Yeah, Blitzer and Wolf. Very expensive. Very. Hey, Mary Carol, you look terrific. Harvey. <laughs> what do you think, Doc? Say, Harry, I want to know how you manage to swing uh, these tickets. Pretty expensive, aren't they? Herb, one of the advantages of managing a supermarket is that people are nice to you. One of the produce suppliers gave me these, the guy that represents Navajo Warpath Grapefruit. <laughs> You know, it's uh, pretty much the same in the awning business. I get my uh, share of free aluminum. I've had it up to here with free aluminum. <laughs> well, tonight you guys get your share of free tickets because we're going to have one thrilling evening in the theater. All right, I'm ready. Hey. Okay. Don't cry for me, Argentina. You were supposed to be immortal. Well, that's all they wanted. Not much to ask for. <laughs> Well, honey, you think you're crying now? You can hear Kate Jackson sing this. There won't be a dry eye in the house. I'm not crying. I got this thing in my eye. I just can't get it out. You know, she's had it all afternoon. Is it the same thing? Yes. Well, I wonder what it is. Well, this is Pittsburgh. It could be anything. <laughs> okay, honey, I can take care of that right now. Honey, really, I've tried No, everything. no, wait, this is foolproof. No, look up. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, a handkerchief. Thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, look up. Uh -huh. Look down again. Wonder what that is. I don't know, but you shouldn't take chances with something like that. We ought to shoot her right over to the emergency room. What? The emergency room? How can I take my wife to an emergency room on Saturday night with a little something in her eye? They turn away people with ice picks in their chest. <laughs> Well, Harry, look, you're not going to find a doctor tonight, so you got no choice. Yeah, you're right. But wait a minute. We don't want to miss Evita. Honey, your eyesight's a little more important to me than Evita Perone. Oh, Harry. <laughs> he sure knows how to turn a girl's head, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go. The hospital's just down the block from the theater, and I'll drive. Oh. Well, we better take two cars. I'm going to park in the Taco Burger lot. Okay. Yeah, you can probably get there before the curtain goes up. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we could come a little late. Oh, Harry, wait a minute. There are always a few little frustrations in an emergency room, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I want you to be real patient, and I don't want you to make any scenes. Promise me. <laughs> well, I promise. Come on, more than that. I want you to be real positive about going to this emergency room. Right. Go ahead. Right. Wait, Come on, Harry. Right. Come on. We'll probably get prompt attention. We'll Good. probably get uh, excellent service. <laughs> we'll probably get out of there before the really bad stabbing victims start rolling in. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> no, no, darling, go ahead. It's just some pushy people. <laughs> hey, w wait a minute. Wait a minute. My wife's in trouble here. I'm a little worried about her. I'm talking to my husband. I'm worried about him, too. He's very sick, and I'm trying to get him into someplace decent. Can't you get him in here? He is in here. <laughs> no, hey, Leonard, I have to go. But listen, whatever you do, don't eat the food. Maybe we should just go. No, take a minute. Name, please? Mary Carol Fitzsimmons. And if you could just give me the essential information. Well, when I got up this morning, I felt like I had the rock of Gibraltar in my no. eye. I got a little eye cup. No. I washed, I washed, it just didn't... No! <laughs> I just want the essential information. What's your health insurance? Oh, yeah, sure, we're insured fully. No problem there. Got, uh, here it is, American Medical Gothic. What are you laughing at? I've had that insurance for years. Uh huh. You ever try using it before? <laughs> okay, I'll take it down. But it's gonna be cash. One moment, Mrs. Cheryl. 
Nurse Hewitt. Yes, Dr. Harwood. Do you happen to remember if niacillin B can cause diarrhea or not? No. Neither do I. <laughs> no, Mrs. Cheryl, it's not the medication. No, I think this diarrhea is all in your head. <laughs> well, now, that's no way to talk to your doctor, is it? <laughs> In her eye. It's been there all day. Oh, uh, you should have someone take a look at that. That could be serious. Well, uh, doctor, uh, excuse me. Uh, I know you got a lot of people in here ahead of us, so this could take a couple of minutes. Do you think you could sneak us Are the forms ready for these people, Nurse Hewitt? All set. Let's have a look. Well, I don't see why not. Oh, great. Oh, good. Now we won't miss the show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a minute, honey. Okay, I'll be right back. Your picture right here. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll wait out here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Nurse, Nurse uh, thank you for your help. I appreciate it. It's all a part of my job. Listen, uh, slip me your address. I'll, I'll send you a crate of Navajo Warpath grapefruit. <laughs> Pink. <laughs> Dr. Theobald, emergency oh, in the gift you. shop. Dr. Theobald, to the gift shop, please. Nurse, this is getting a little absurd. My wife's been in there for over two hours. Sir, I'm sure the doctors are working as quickly as they can within the margins of safety. I know, but she just had a little bitty thing in her eye. I'm going to miss Kate Jackson and Evita. So am I. <laughs> Cardiovascular Team 3, please report to the game room staff. Excuse me. Hi. You know, I cannot believe this place. My wife has been in here for over two solid hours now. The heavens will open and the conqueror will descend with his mighty hordes and he will smite mine enemies with his terrible sword of justice and he shall sear their bowels on the steaming rocks of hell. <laughs> Oh, look at the time. <laughs> Nurse, I want my wife and I want her now. Uh, Dr. Harwood, this man wants his wife and he's causing trouble. What's the name? Mary Carol Fitzsimmons. And your wife's name? That is her name. <laughs> you know, I think she's just ready to check out one moment. Oh, it's about time. <laughs> Nurse, I'm uh, sorry I complained, but I'm just not used to a place being as efficient as your hospital is. Mr. Fitzsimmons? Yes. Here's your wife, sir. As good as new. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. It's not my wife. You're Mr. Fitzsimmons, aren't you? Yeah. Then I'm afraid this is your wife. That is not my wife. Are you a doctor? No. Well, I am. And I'm telling you, this is your wife. You're crazy. Come on, kid. This is my only chance to bust out of here. I want my wife. No one right now. You Let's understand be me? reasonable now. Mr. I'm do be reasonable. Mrs. I want my wife. Mr. There's no reason in Orderly. this. Orderly. No, no, no. Calm down. Just hold it. Call security immediately. Calm down, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Hold. Just breathe. Listen. Would anybody like to take us to Evita tonight? Kate Jackson. On the aisle. <laughs> So you see, it's just a little honest confusion. Yes, the elderly woman's name is Mrs. Fitzsimmons, too. It's spelled the same way in everything. <laughs> Isn't that too much? Okay, okay. <laughs> but where is my wife? Don't whine. Oh. <laughs> We're working on it. <clears throat> but why is it so hard to find her? Look, I'll let you in on a little secret, Fitzsimmons. You see, there's a big going-away party for the head of our psychiatric unit tonight, right over there in the East Wing. My wife's at the party? No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, 
You see, some of my staff are over at the party, so I'm just a little bit shorthanded. But seriously, I don't want you to worry. We may lose patients on the operating table, but we don't lose them in the halls. <laughs> <laughs> Just relax if I were you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Pretty soon your wife will be out here by your side and it will be quips and pranks and wanton wiles, <laughs> nods and bits and wreathed smiles. Are you any relation to him? Oh, goodness, Dr. Jorgensen, I almost forgot about him. Oh, Dr. Jorgensen. He's a doctor? Yes, a psychiatrist. He's here to talk about being the new head of our psychiatric unit. <laughs> Dr. Ken will see you now. Right down the hall to the East Wing. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Remember what I told you. Right, right. <laughs> Hi. What's going on? Yeah, we waited at the theater and decided we'd better come over here. It's been one big dumb mix-up. Well, where's Mary Carroll? Well, she'll be out in a minute, I think. How was the theater? Cute. Cute. Hey, I thought it was the best musical I've seen since Lee Majors in Man of La Mancha. <laughs> oh, come on, Mary Carroll. Well, have you seen her since you got here? No, it's been crazy. You know they got her mixed up with an old lady who had the same name? You're kidding. Uh-oh. <laughs> Diane, don't even bring that up. Bring what up? Oh, nothing, Harry. Uh, what happened to Elaine Cathcart? You know the girl from where I work, but yeah. uh, my lips are sealed. So are mine. Don't tell them. Under no circumstances. <laughs> Come on, guys, you can tell me. What happened to her? Well, well she, she went to the hospital and they slipper. got her I mean, mixed up with anything. another wait lady. Wait a second, wait a second. Let me tell him. She was my friend. I worked with her. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Elaine Cathcart. She went to the hospital with a sliver. They mixed her up with someone else. What happened to her? Harry? I go to the grave before I tell you. Speaking of graves, did you ever send a sympathy card to the Cathcart family? She was your friend. You worked with her. Harry Carroll! Harry! Harry Carroll! Harry! Harry! Harry Carroll! Oh, hold it. No, you're not going anyplace. <laughs> Every minute I thought that was my boy. <laughs> this is for Dr. Penn's going away party. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, we're all sorry. Sorry. I'm gonna go get I'm some sorry. coffee, okay? Oh, good, honey. Harry, take it easy. Calm so, down, relax. You know, Herbie's the funniest thing what goes through your mind at a time like that. I looked at those cold cuts and I thought, I didn't order any autopsy. <laughs> I just hope she's all right. Oh, Harry, I'm sure she is. Well, you know, she could be sitting in there on some examining table too timid to ask if she could leave, the poor thing. <laughs> well, then that sounds like Mary Carroll. Yeah, more likely sitting in there gabbing with some nurse. <laughs> or, you know... Maybe flirting with some intern. What do you mean flirting with some intern? Nothing, Harry. It's just a saying. You know, she never did let me forget that boyfriend. Steve Shimko became the big doctor. Uh -huh. Not a year goes by, I don't hear about that one. <laughs> I'm sitting out here worried sick about it. She's probably in there making eyes at some young intern. Does Mary Carol want coffee? You want any coffee, honey? Eh, she doesn't want <laughs> So typical of her. Last week, you know, I want to go to the Steelers game, and she gave me that little thing. <laughs> Mary, Mary Carroll, Carol, you're up. Fuck, are you okay? Hey, what are they doing to you? Please. Why, this is a hospital. There are people here trying to watch television. <laughs> is my wife. I asked you to stop whining. <laughs> Could you please excuse me? Let me see. Pardon me. Mary Carol Fitzsimmons. Right. Well, you should have said something if you knew she was here. I didn't know she was here. But you just showed me she was here. Oh, Dr. Harwood, this is Mrs. Fitzsimmons. Hello. <laughs> This is your wife. Why, thank you. Now, may I ask a question? Oh, sure. What is she doing in this hospital gown lying on his table? Well, um, she's just come back from x-ray. You gave her an x-ray because she had something in her eye? No, we um, x-rayed her because she had a nasty bump on her head this afternoon. She didn't have a bump on her head this afternoon. No. 
Well, true, but that elderly Mrs. Fitzsimmons did bump her head. That Mrs. Fitzsimmons escaped a half an hour ago. Yes, but not before we thoroughly examined her right eye. And there was nothing in it. Just because she was the one who had the bump on her head. You call yourself a doctor. You call what you do in here medicine? Oh, they're just a minute, Mr. Fitzsimmons. You've gone a little bit too far. <laughs> now, we gave each of these women the best state-of-the-art medical care available. Yes, but you gave each woman the treatment that the other woman was supposed supposed to have. Well, that's quibbling now, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, that's a good girl. Oh, what have you done oh, to her? Why is she drooling? <laughs> it's just from the pain pill. Pain pill? We're lucky we took those x-rays, doctor. We discovered a broken collarbone. What broken collarbone? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> look at that. Uh, no, uh, look at that. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, Honey, haven't you caused enough trouble? <laughs> you can talk! <laughs> My collarbone, it's, it's not broken. Oh, I'm afraid it is, Mrs. Fitzsimmons. You have a bone the size of your finger jutting right up from the collarbone area. That is my finger. <laughs> when I took the x-ray, my arms were crossed like this. She doesn't have a wedding ring on her collarbone. Well, what do you know? It's a happy ending. <laughs> now for that eye. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, honey, we're getting out of here. Right. Harry, I'll get the car. All right, I'll leave mine in the taco burger lot. Okay, honey, go get your clothes on. And hurry we're up, Mary Carol. Now, look, you, I bring my wife in here with a little something stuck in her eye. You keep me waiting in there for three hours. You give her an x-ray she doesn't even need. Honey, would you hurry up? You completely misread the x-ray, bring her out here zonked, and you call it a happy ending? Well, maybe we did cut into your evening. They were going to see Evita with Kate Jackson. <laughs> You know, I'd like to be able to run off to the theater every time Kate Jackson decides to sing, too. <laughs> but I can't. I'm a doctor. You see these people? I took an oath. I am dedicated to healing my fellow man. That's the only music I need in my life. As to your wife's condition, Mr. Fitzsimmons, there are people who don't even have anything wrong with them who'd pay big money for that drug. Do you know you're crazy? <laughs> well, Dr. Penn, I'm proud to be taking your place as head of the psychiatric unit. Hope I can fill your shoes. Good luck, Dr. Jorgensen. I need no luck. My Avenger will be at my side ready to crush my enemy. Have a nice day. <laughs> You better all run for your life. Everybody in this place is great. Hey! <laughs> Harry's battles will continue in a moment. Can you believe this bill from the emergency room? Look, they charge you for an examination, medication, an x-ray, <laughs> wheelchair, $230, and you had to take that thing out of your eye yourself. Yeah, there wasn't even a real doctor anywhere in that place. I suppose you're going to tell me that big Dr. Steve Shimko's here been there, huh? I did not say that Steve was a doctor. I said he and I used to play doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, here's some good news. From Blitzer and Wolf Department Store, they admit they were in error charging us $52,000 for your dress shirt, and they have sent us a new bill. What did they charge? $3,500. $3,500? You see that? Right. I know you've got to keep fighting. You can never stop fighting every minute. You're right. Who's left? Mater? Jerry Falwell? Me? <laughs> oh, see, it's not all bad news. Look, this is from the phone company. They found our check. They are restoring our service. Oh, sure, sure, they're going to restore the service. But the question is, when? <laughs> now that it's restored, I'm going to call Taiwan. Do you know that shower curtain's falling apart already? Hello. Yeah, this is him. Whoa. $75? Are you... We'll just see about that, mister. What? Manager of Taco Burger just towed her car away. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is David Hartman. Tomorrow, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, Arthur Ashe with tennis tips, and the great Fred Waring has his 81st birthday on Good Morning America. Tomorrow, Jack unwittingly picks the wrong kind of girl to bring home to mother on Three's Company. Then, Henry's one angry man when jury duty forces him to stay up all night on Too Close for Comfort. After the heart's dog leads his masters to a deadly scheme worth billions on Heart to Heart. Now stay tuned for Monday Night Baseball following an ABC News Brief next. <laughs>